Well, let me stop so you right far, there. Just skip the bullet. Yeah. Greg, uh, I want you to expand on that because I don't really ever toot my own horn here because I'm always busy. I'm, I'm obsessed with the story. I'm obsessed with the interesting guest. I'm obsessed with reality and really trying to learn reality for myself. I mean, this is an obsession, uh, a passion, an addiction. And I know for you it's the same because I've read your books, followed your work for more than a decade. I think that we forget how effective we've been, yourself particularly. I mean, I forget all the time I think back to all the things I've done, the stories I've broken. And then I was just thinking while you were talking about books you wrote six, seven years ago saying New Score was spying and wielding authority. And, and I was just thinking, wait a minute, right. I haven't heard hardly anybody, well, I did see a few articles, giving you credit for being right about all this. And I've been right about so many things. I just think it's important we point out that you in 2002 got the IMF World Bank documents and said how they've imploded Argentina and third world countries, they're going to do that in Europe and the U.S. They're going to use derivatives. They're going to take over. They're going to occupy the countries. Boom, it's all happened. I mean, I'm just sitting here not in some mutual admiration society. It's kind of freaking me out because I don't have that high a view of myself. You know, I'm like, I'm just a regular guy just trying to find out what's happening. Uh, you're an investigative reporter. I have high views of you. I mean, my point is, it is creepy to know there's not many of us that actually know what's going on or that have any type of venue. And I'm getting threats. I'm on enemy's list. They're calling you up saying, we got files on you. It's creepy. And, and I've digressed off here, but I think it's newsworthy that, that we always are just moving forward, never pointing out where we were right in the past. So spend a few minutes and then get back into CNN uh, because I remember... Uh, having you on, you having the documents, you talking about news corps, a mafia, and I remember going, well, I believe Greg, and yeah, he's got some proof, but, and then, and then their outlets demonizing you and calling you a liar and, you know, cover stories. I mean, that's all actually in Vulture's Picnic that came out even before this scandal broke. So, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you better get some good life insurance. I, I know I have, and none of us are ever going to commit suicide, right, Greg? Never. If if I'm floating face down the swimming pool, please don't uh, believe any note that says I was I felt terrible and had to go. Don't <laughs> buy it, please. Okay, I'm, I'm putting that down on on the record right now. Me too. I, I, I've never held a, a knife to my own throat ever. So you know. So please, uh, I want to put that right on the record. I'm glad we got a moment to do that. As in terms of, of getting of saying, yeah, I told you so, I think it is worthwhile because it gives credibility to the material that we did put on before. I should note that I, I'm a lucky guy in one way. You might not see me on US TV except uh, you know, bless you, Alex, especially on Valentine's Day, then kiss you. Uh, <laughs> um, but let, um, but I do have the world's largest news network behind me, putting me on a prime time BBC television. Now, do understand that BBC, when I got the documents from inside the IMF, and now we do see Greece on fire. There's a, a chapter in Vulture's Picnic called the generalism of globalization, where I actually have these documents from inside the IMF World Bank. And because of my position in journalism in Europe, I was actually able to confront personally the um, director general of the World Trade Organization and put these inside confidential documents and cables in front of him. That was his opportunity to say, oh, it's all made up. It's a bunch of conspiracy junk. He verified everything. He tried to talk away their meaning, but he verified everything that I had, all the documents I had. When you see Greece on fire, I saw those documents. I also spoke to the inventor of the euro, um, Bob Mundell, and who said, you know, basically is saying this was in the plan. The idea was to, he wanted to end, uh, he wanted to make sure that there was a sell-off of all the government properties in Greece, etc. You have to set a fire if you're going to have a fire sale. He thought that this is the best thing that's ever happened. These guys, this was the purpose of the euro. He said, he was very upset, he told me, that, that uh, democracies... Uh, get to kind of vote on their fiscal and monetary, have fiscal and monetary control. He wanted to create a mechanism, the euro, which would be, uh, which would make uh, elected parliaments and congresses and presidents subservient to an economic formula. And the economic formula is called the um, it is called the three percent rule there it's a there's a german word which i can't pronounce that they use uh but that was the purpose was to basically create something that would replace 
that would replace democracy. In fact, by the way, I spoke with, you know, I, because again, because of my position, I get to meet all these heads of state, et cetera. And I've met with Carlo Monti, the new, um, the new prime minister uh, of, uh, of Italy, the new chief of Italy. And uh, Monti, um, you know, has not been elected. He's just a banker. That's, you know, you don't get to choose anymore. They call the him a technocrat. I mean, even The Economist says it's good to not have countries run themselves. We, the technocrats, will run it now. And as you said years ago when you got to meet, you know, with the head of the organization, the World Trade Organization, they admitted this is how we were going to take over. But then it's they're the ones that sold the fraudulent debt and got the governments to sign on. They're the ones that actually have most of the debt. And so they do this Fingali judo move where they're set up as our bosses, even though they're the progenitors of it. It's, it's insane. Yeah. Well, in fact, in, in the case of like uh, uh, Greece, I call it a crime scene. In particular, the Greek government, to stay within the euro, both the so-called socialists and the so-called conservatives there, um, had cut a private deal with Goldman Sachs to hide uh, to hide their true deficits. And this is true of most of the countries, but it, this was particularly done with Goldman Sachs and had to do with, with trading euros into yen and dollars and back. Uh, technically, on paper, it looked like Goldman Sachs took a multi-billion dollar loss. Well, Goldman Sachs never takes a deliberate multi-million billion dollar loss. That's nonsense. In fact, it was covered up by a secret agreement to pay them back at massive charges, uh, with massive uh, usurious charges. I mean, you couldn't call it anything, uh, anything else, plus a half billion dollar fee on top of the massive interest rates that they were collecting, all done in secret. When this came out, of course, then the Greek uh, bond market, the market for Greek bonds, completely collapsed, and people rightly, in a way, asked for massive, massively high interest because, you know, they say we're, we're victims of a fraud. Now, why, um, you know, someone asked me, actually, uh, uh, actually one of the band members from, if you remember, Dire Straits, uh, uh, asked yeah, me, well, how come, how come they weren't arrested? Well, you, the United States, what, the Securities Exchange Commission is supposed to uh, arrest the, uh, the government of Greece? Because after all, it was a conspiracy between two governments and Goldman Sachs. And here's the deal. Instead of Goldman being busted, they get, they get money from the European Central Bank. They get totally bailed out. They get fees for handling the bailout. And then their guys take over the country and they buy up the assets of the country, the shipping, the beaches, uh, you know, the the The, the islands. Places. I've seen cases yeah. in, in the news where they owe a, a brokerage firm that sold them crap $3 billion. So the head of the company goes, I'll take an island personally for $3 billion. I mean, and it's all through fraud. So I guess Madoff's problem and Ken Lay's problem was the frauds weren't big enough and weren't so giant that it'd bring down the whole system. Here's my question for you, and then I want to go back to the news court thing because people say, hey, you cut him off when you got to the part about CNN. Where is it all headed now with MF Global, where, as you know, the head of the commodities board was the former minion of Corzine. Corzine gets caught in Congress lying. Of course, he ordered the now $1.6 billion uh, transferred to London, and then he doesn't get in trouble. And I was talking to Max Kaiser today. He, he said, look, this is just going to signal a new level of stealing going after segregated accounts. So, A, where is it all headed? And then, B, going back, what is News Corp from your deep research and understanding? What is it? A, more of a mafia organization? And then tie it in to uh, the uh, host that took over Larry King's slot uh, that you were trying to get to when I interrupted. Okay, uh, that, that's quite a tall order. First, Corzine, who was governor of New Jersey, but he was also, you have to understand, he was the CEO of Goldman Sachs before he became governor of New Jersey. Now, uh, why don't they go after Corzine? Why isn't he read his rights? I mean, if you shoplift, you know, if you shoplift a screwdriver from a hardware store, they're gonna they're gonna read you your rights. You shoplift 1.6 billion dollars, and and um, they invite you to Congress to just uh, give a chat. Why? What the answer is? What he has on these guys, and who else is in on this stuff? Now, I got a glimpse of it. I can't get it all, you know, because I just don't have all of the roots in. But I did have a document. Mark Confidential from Tim Geithner, 
who is our Secretary of Treasury, to Larry Summers. It's in the book Vulture's Picnic. In fact, you can see it at the, my site, vulturespicnic.org. Um, it was a cable written by Geithner to Summers talking about how they were going to use the World Trade Organization to squeeze any nation that got in the way of our banks and didn't join in the deregulation um, uh, fest uh, that was going on. So they were how they're going to punish nations, in particular Brazil. Now, why is that important, That this discussion? The answer is that Geithner told Summers, who was um, – at that time, Secretary of Treasury, now and, and until recently was Obama's uh, economic czar. Why did Geithner, our now Secretary of Treasury, write to Summers? He was telling him to call the top five bankers in America before they pulled the trigger at the World Trade Organization because it could bring down and did bring down the world financial order. But he didn't want to do that unless he said, call these guys. John Corzine was one of the five guys to call. And by the way, the memo I have in print in the book are their private and personal numbers. And the first, one of the first reviewers of the book before it was published decided, oh, what the heck, I'll call the numbers and see. And he, and he, got, the, uh, he got right through personally uh, to the CEO of Citibank, <laughs> right into his office. Uh, obviously, those numbers have changed. But the important thing is these guys, our leaders, Secretary of Treasury, do not unless they contact Goldman, it was Bank of America, Citibank, Morgan. Those are the guys running the show. And if they were to ever try to nail Corzine, Madoff is just a sideshow. But if they're ever to try to nail Corzine, he could pull out his files and say, well, let's talk about some of the meetings we had. So, we so had here's Clinton, my question. Right. What do you do when there's five or six megabank dons who've gotten so untouchable because they know where all the bodies are buried that they start publicly just stealing cash straight, straight out of people's accounts. I mean, that's corruption getting to that terminal model where, you know, that historians talk about where nobody can blow the whistle on anybody else. And so things just rapidly disintegrate. Are we starting to reach the disintegration point or does it have a, a decade more of just deepening Caligula type mania? Uh, well, the good thing is that America is at its core a very rich nation, and there's rich pickings. As I said, one of their big targets was Brazil, which is fabulously rich. Another target of Paul the Vulture Singer is the Congo. He's been seizing uh, money for shipments of cobalt and oil. So there's a lot of resource out there in this planet, and there's an unending appetite of the Chinese to, to take it. So if they can get their hands on our resources, by owning all our debt and controlling it, manipulating it. You know, it's amazing how much Americans will accept paying. Two million foreclosures a year, massive stealing uh, by Corzine, by Goldman. You saw the fraud in Greece. People in Greece are burning down buildings, but, you know, Americans are shrugging their shoulders. Um, you know, it's, um, it's amazing the amount of, of punishment the American people will take. So I think that there's quite a while yet before, because there's a lot of money still to, to steal out of the, you know, a lot of gold to, to uh, Sure, there is. But, I mean, Greg, mine. you live here, I live here, but you go all over the world more than probably anybody I know. I'm seeing the oxygen leave the room. I mean, I'm seeing family, everybody I know, even people that have been upper middle class, well-to-do. I mean, there's, there, there's money problems. Stuff costs a lot more, and, and we've been somewhat isolated from the rest of the world, but it's going to accelerate. Even Forbes is saying we're probably going to see 30-plus percent inflation in just the next year. And uh, I think it's the old story of the sleeping giant. I, uh, but, 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 but that's even scarier because it's going to get so much worse before they finally wake up. And then you've got... Obama signing the NDAA, the Republicans supporting it. Uh, they're admittedly training the military for urban warfare and domestic unrest. I mean, it's pretty scary. Well, you know, let's face it. When you and I talked back in 2002, nine years ago, when I first got my hands on the IMF and World Bank documents, they'd gone after they'd burnt uh, Argentina to the ground. You had uh, you had professors uh, hunting through garbage cans looking for food. Brazil had basically become a financial colony, and they were squeezing it dry. Ecuador had lost all its oil and was basically um, you know a duchy of, of Chevron. So what's happened? But then those nations came back 
people went into the streets in those nations. They said that, you know, uh, uh, Occidental Petroleum, Al Gore's uh, little operation got tossed out of Ecuador. Brazil told the IMF to go to hell. The only nation in the entire planet which has refused to sign the financial services agreement, opening up their banking sector to, uh, to the derivatives uh, uh, toxic salesmen. Uh, Argentina told these characters to go fly. Those economies are now just really zooming. So people do react.